<coughs> Hi folks, hope you're okay today. We're doing a four part series on the Trinity. Uh, equipping you if you're going down Hyde Park to debate. Um, and uh, these are uh, papers that um, that you can get so now this this paper uh, you can download it's a you can get it PDF free it's called the deity of Christ excuse me I've got a itchy nose it's called the deity of Christ by FF Bruce and WGA Martin um, it's the deity of Christ, F. F. Bruce, W. and W. J. Martin. It's an absolutely brilliant piece of paper. If you're a young Christian or a pastor, it's a really, really good uh, PDF to download, and it gives you a lot of helpful information on the Trinity. So I'm reading from this now. And uh, you can look up the scripture references. So, Old Testament titles of Jehovah appropriated by Christ. A significant title assumed by the Lord Jesus in the book of Revelation is first and last. In chapters, in the book of Revelation, chapter uh, 1, verse 11, chapter 2, verse 8, chapter 22, verse 13. In chapter 22, verse 16 of Revelation, the speaker says to himself, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify uh, unto you of these things. Having already said, in verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Also in chapter 2, verse 8, there is no doubt about the person to whom the word refers. These things said the first and the last who died and came to life. The designation first and last okay, occurs three times in Isaiah 41 chapter 41 verse 4 Isaiah chapter 44 verse 6 Isaiah chapter 48 verse 12 so basically Jesus says I am the first and the last and God says in the Old Testament I am the first and the last so the two are connected the word I am the writers write Jehovah the incorrect but well established rendering of the Hebrew constant Yahweh was regarded by the Jews as too sacred to be pronounced and was replaced by a variety of substitutes such as Lord Adonai or the name we can no longer say with certainty how it was pronounced but Exodus 3.14 we know that it was derived from the verb to be God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said to the people of Israel, I am has sent you. Now on more than one occasion our Lord refers to himself by using I am in a way that points unmistakably to the Old Testament title of Jehovah. In a controversy with the Jews, he declared, Before Abraham was, I am. John 8, 58. Had he been merely... Uh, had he been merely a pre-existent being, then he would have had to say, before Abraham was, I was. The amazing implication of his claim did not escape the Jews, who clearly showed by the extreme violence of their reaction in attempting to stone him to death for alleged blasphemy. Another approach in captors whom, sorry, another, another occasion on which he used, it was at the time of his arrest, to his question, uh, to approach in captivism, whom seek you? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth, to which he replied, I am. The effect that this brief utterance had on them was dramatic. They went backward and fell to the ground. John chapter 18, verse 5 and 6. The mere literal sense of these words could hardly have produced the extraordinary effect. Then again, at the crucial stage of his trial, Jesus being interrogated by the high priest, as to his messianic claims, I am, and you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with clouds of heaven.
The savage remnants of this are called forth in the high priest and the company in Mark chapter 14 verse 62. The savage remnants of this called forth in the high priest and the company by can be explained only if it was understood by them to be a claim to personal deity, a blasphemy in the eyes of such magnitude to be expatiated only by death. Light. The coming Messiah is designated in two familiar prophecies as light, Isaiah 9.2, compare Matthew 4.16, Isaiah 46, 49 verse 6, compare Luke chapter 2 verse 32. Five times in the first chapter of John, uh, John chapter 1 verse 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, this description is used. The uniqueness is stressed in verse 9, the true light. Our Lord himself said, I am the light of the world, John chapter 8, verse 12. Now, light is a well-known title of Jehovah. For instance, in Psalm 27, verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Or even more specifically, in Isaiah, in the context of Messiah prophecies, Jehovah will be to you an everlasting light, Isaiah 6, 19. Again, following on the Messiah prophecy in Isaiah 59, 20, and Isaiah 60 verse 1, 60, chapter 60 verse 1, light de designating on the Messiah equated with the glory of Jehovah. Um, it is instructed to see how John, in his introduction to his first epistle, uses the very same, it pit, a pit, a same statement of God that he had already used in the opening verses of, of his gospel in the incarnate Son. So there is the light that the darkness found invisible. 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Rock. There are two words commonly used in Hebrew for rock as well as the word stone. One is used in, for instance in Psalm 18.2, Jehovah is my rock. Uh, Psalm 95 verse 1, O come let us sing to Jehovah. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. In Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, interprets the rock of Exodus 17, 6 as referring to Christ. Stone is used as the title of God in Genesis 49, 24, and in the Messianic passage, Messianic passage of Isaiah 28, 16, Behold, I am laying a Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tested stone, etc. Bridegroom. The figure of bridegroom is one that is frequently used either implicitly or explicitly of Jehovah in the Old Testament. In Hosea chapter 2 verse 16, for instance, Jehovah says, You will call my husband, again in Isaiah 62 5 verse 5, as a bridegroom rejoices over the bridegroom, your God will rejoice over you. Our Lord early in his ministry and often subsequently depicts himself as a bridegroom in reply to the Pharisees he says of himself can the sons of the wedding chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them Mark 2.19 um, Shepherd Psalm 23 verse 1 we read Jehovah is my shepherd Ezekiel 34.15 I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep in John 10.11 the Lord uses the title of himself, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Peter calls him the Shepherd and Guardian of your souls. Forgiveness of sin. Jeremiah 31, 34, For I, Jehovah, will forgive their wickedness. And yet, uh, in the New Testament, we find our Lord claiming the right for himself. In Luke 5, 21, we read of the Pharisees protesting that only God can forgive sins. This was to them as it would be to us self-evident. I'm just missing some of what is the saying now. So you get the idea and you can get this PDF and at the end of this article, it's very easy to read. Uh, we can't go into it all. Uh, this is just a, like an introduction to the defense of the Trinity. At, at the end, it has 
objections, brief notes and some text used by Arians or people who uh, criticize the Trinity. So I'll read a few then. In John chapter 1 verse 1, much is made by Arian amateur grammarians of the omission of the definite article with God in the phrase and the word was God. Such an omission is common with nouns in a predicate construction. To have used it would have equated the word and the word only with God, whereas without it the forces and the word was himself God. The article is omitted to, as omitted to on occasion in other constructions. In fact, there are four instances of it in this very chapter. And in John 3, 3, God is written once without once with the article. To translate any of these cases as a God would be totally indefensible. And then it's got a list of scholars. And he says, strange literalistic interpretations have been put on the word beginning in the verse, and to readers of it said, in the beginning the word began, whereas what is affirmed is that in the beginning he already was existing. Um, another example, John fourteen twenty eight, My father is greater than I. This can refer only to the self-imposed limitations of the son in his incarnation. He had already claimed with equality with God in John 5.18 and oneness with him in John 10.30. But he was not only the true God, he was, not, he was now also true man. In fact, rightly understood, this is a claim for the highest import, for only things of the same order of magnitude can be compared. No mere man or angelic being could ever say God is greater than I, for created and uncreated are of different orders. In John 17, 21, this verse is quoted in an attempt to weaken the force of John 10, 30, I and the Father are one, about the meaning of which his audience were in no doubt whatsoever. However, the second one is not the best manuscripts, though simply they also may be in us. So when it says, my, when Jesus says, my Father and I are one, others will quote, well, there's a later passage that says, um, in John 17, 21, uh, may they be one as we are one. So it can't be the same that Jesus is God. And it's saying here in many manuscripts that the word one in 721 is not in there. So that's interesting. So anyway, you get the idea. You can go and read the article. Print it off and take it with you to High Park. Put it in your Bible and memorize it and uh, it'd be really good and it's a very good it's a very simple read but it's quite scholarly so it's uh, the deity of christ by ff F. bruce and wj martin and just google it put pdf and you can print it off as you know uh, you're allowed to use it so so that's the article there so thank you for listening and god bless you